Okay, and then you can see that like that, that's where they can probably get see oh, you. Okay. So if you want to scoot over a little bit, then they can see you fully. Is that big? Is that text big enough that you guys can see it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm Holly. I am with the Herbie Home Group. I'm their director of operations. I've been there coming on four years. Um, when I started with the team, we did about 147 units, and this year we're on track uh, for about 460. So it's been quite a jump, and I would say some of the best opportunities that we've had on our team is our operations department. We run super lean and super efficiently, as well as have a good customer service uh, on our end as well. Because past clients and past client referrals are our number one source. So I am here to kind of walk through the buyer side transaction as well as the seller side transaction. And I can, this could take me like two hours, but we are going to condense it into 30 minutes. <laughs> Um, so I want this to be super interactive and if you have questions or concerns, please ask or pipe up as we go along. Um, so what I like to start with is as you guys have a lead come to your system or let's say a buyer that's ready to sign and move forward. What is the step that you take? Like what is the first step you take with them? Enter them into command. Ooh, love it. What about compliance wise? What do we need to do to make them our clients? Sign the buyer. Yeah. Send disclosures. Okay. We're gonna we'll do that one after we get offer accepted. So we signed a buyer. How do we know that that buyer's rep is complete? What do we need to do? They've signed it, but how do how is it a good thing? Acceptable contract. What do we need to do? <clears throat> Send a signed copy back to them. So that is our first touch as operations, as well as what you guys can do as an agent. Here is a signed copy. Looking forward to helping you find a home. Um, and something that we do along with that is we send a little koozie that just says, "Here to you know, keep your hand." I don't, I'll have to find the verbiage, but it's like something cute little saying that Caitlin came up with that is like here to protect you along your real estate journey. But a nice little touch, and it's the way that we get their address right away and can start putting them on our 36 touch. So I'm going to type that in here, send a signed copy. Fun little note. Which it could also be a thank you note. Okay, so now we have them, they're on a search, we're doing showings, and let's say we get an accepted offer out of home. Seller signed contracts, we can re receive them as agents back. What are our next steps? Find them a home. Accepted offer. What are we doing with our paperwork? Submitting paperwork and command. Submitting and command, great. As well as who else do we need to send that to? The lender needs it and title needs it. Love it. As well as our clients need it. So what I would recommend as you guys continue to get more accepted offers is to template your emails. So this is something that we have, and you guys are Google users, everything is templated. So we have one that says accepted offer trust funds, accepted offer check. And everything is templated. We highlight in there the few things that we need to change. Um, and it's, it's super simple for our clients, as well as your clients, to just receive an email that summarizes everything. And I believe Jessica actually has a copy of, do you have that accepted offer email? Um, yes, I have to. I can, I can reset it to it. 
it's just a really easy message um, and something that we've really focused on is if a client's calling us, we failed somewhere along the system because they should have known that ahead of time. And so we like to really be pro as proactive as possible. Um, so we send the information to the co-op agent, we send it to our lender, we send it to our clients, um, as well as title. We just kind of conglomerate lender title and co-op so they all have each other's information right away it saves us a step um, and it's all there and then we give our instructions to our clients yes we're not doing as many inspections right now but we include that information as well as title and if they do have another title person let us know and we'll switch it over but we use minnesota title here um so we send congrats email Woo! And so we have our inspection. And something I would recommend an inspection that um, we haven't been able to implement but is on our to-do list just to make our clients feel extra special is the morning of inspection, send a $5 Starbucks gift card and just say, caffeinate up, can't wait to see you. You know, get ready for your inspection, let us know if you have questions. Um, and we know a few teams that do that and that's like a really nice way to even add in there like hey do who do you know that's looking to buy or sell or invest in real estate and people are like Starbucks oh here actually my aunt is you know so that has been a really nice touch um and something we've done as soon as they're through uh, the inspection period is we've been doing we're calling it like a sweet treat and it's a nothing so have you guys heard of nothing but cakes yep. mm -hmm. they have uh so we did our research and they have a location, Northwest, South, and East. And we know that everyone can get around to one of them and we send them a $5 gift card, which gets them like a Bontini or something like that, that just says like, this has been such a sweet deal to work on together, yeah, excited to get you to close. Who do you know that's looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? And that's been a really, really good touch. And for five bucks, including postage, it's been, I would say it has worked for us really well. So that's been another really great client service touch for us. What questions do you have in regards to transactions so far? There's this kind of me talking too fast. Nothing? Okay. So what's the next step after inspection? Negotiating any items on the inspection. Right. And how do we keep our clients feeling taken care of during this process? Or allow us to feel like the advisors in this? Consistent. And that's been our biggest thing is that uh, our inspector will also send us the reports. Our agents are always reading through them um, and we'll come up with our list. We say like, you have to come up with three things that to show that you took the time to read through this um, because we know that they might not know what to ask for. So let's bring up if there are three big concerns, you know, outlets, simple things like that are not gonna be an issue, but or are we protecting their health, safety, and welfare? So that's a really important thing. And then it allows them to know like, hey, I just looked through this. These are the three things that I would think about asking for. Tell me what you're thinking. And just shows them that we're being proactive and staying top of mind to their specific transaction, especially as you guys get busier and have 20. This will take five minutes to really look through and kind of know what's going on. So, Read through it. Yeah, and there's, um, I found uh, the one that's the preferred vendor in our office uh, branch inspections. They have um, a really cool um, option up on the top right where you can use any of the verbiage that, like how to fix something, right? So like if you're building out your, um, your inspection, uh, request right on the addendum mm -hmm. for amendment. Um, 
you can just cut and paste the stuff and say, okay, this, this, and this needs to be done. Instead of going in and being like, okay, like coming up with it, like the seller needs to have, you know, have oh, receipts wow. and this and that. Yeah. So it's just like a, a PDF that um, you can, or you can actually just cut and paste the whole thing and plop it into the amendment. And it is, like the biggest because you don't have to think about it right yeah absolutely. how you're going to phrase it i know i could to them. literally write an amendment 12 times and be like does this sound right right like, does this sound okay exactly. well, that's really great yeah and i would also recommend always say provide receipts we've run into it in the past and as long as we can get those up in the title and kind of cya right you're good to go another thing is um that i haven't done in the past and i learned the hard way is um, having it done by a certain time and then walking through and looking at it. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll just be like, okay, you know, and then you get there for the final walkthrough and you're like, they didn't do anything. Like yeah. they didn't, they didn't do anything they were supposed to. And then closing is on the hook yeah. for that. But. So we have done, we always will do like 10 days prior to close and then we'll do an inspection walkthrough and then we'll do a final walkthrough just because Unfortunately, we've run into it more than we would like as well, where it's like us scrambling or then us as agents needing to pay $500 to ensure that our clients feel comfortable. So I would highly recommend it. Also highly recommend you print out the amendment and bring it with you. So you're not, you don't get back to your office and you're like, oh my God, I didn't look at this. Yeah. So we always bring it with and right. just highlight it as we go and give some reassurance to the client as well. Okay, what's next? We negotiated our inspection. What are we doing next? Well, now it's kind of quiet because, like, if appraisal has been ordered, then we're kind of we're either waiting for that um, or this is the time when we need to just follow up every week and do that, like you guys do on Fridays. Yep. So you don't have. So something that we implemented on our team is uh, we call it like our Friday uh, weekly check-in. And so every Friday, it's just a generic email that goes out to all of our clients that just says, hey, just checking in. What questions do you have prior to the weekend? Otherwise, have a great weekend. Here's an event we have coming up, register. But it eliminates, and we usually will do that Friday morning. And that way, we can cover phone calls and questions and Lenders will get back to us during the day, or if there's anything needed, it's taken care of during the day. And we don't, we aren't getting calls at 7 p.m. on Friday night and or Saturday all day, feeling like, oh yeah, you know what? I was actually just curious about X, Y, and Z. It's so taken you said care that of. goes out to like lenders for transactions as well, or um, just the clients? Yeah, that's a great question. So we do, it depends. I would say our lender communication is gonna be more, um, based off of where they are in the process. Um, we have what we call a, like our pending spreadsheet that just kind of outlines where we are with everything. And Nicole references that each day that says like, okay, here are um, three deals that need, uh, what is it called? What am I thinking of from a lender? You usually get it like a week or two weeks prior to closing. Oh. No, no, no. Oh. Disclosure come, come, or two uh, weeks before? Yeah, like that says they're good with financing. Oh, the written statement. The written statement, thank you. So we're checking like written st statement dates and with the lender, I would say it's much more unique as to how we're communicating with them. And a lot of great lenders have programs that are reaching out to you weekly and kind of keeping us more in the loop with where they are in the file. But we definitely do check in if need be. Um, but really we're focusing on the client and just doing a Friday check-in email that just asks if they have any questions because we know if we can get in front of the questions, we al alleviate any distractions for us during the day, which is a big thing. And we, there's something, one of my, Jordan Freed, I don't know if you girls were in that, um, it's called Pam, is what, how he says you need to break up your days. It's prepare and action. So we spend 30 minutes preparing for our day, we spend an hour in action, and then we spend an hour maintaining what we have. And that's just a constant to do that. And then you take a break and then you pay them again. And that's been super helpful, especially to create efficiencies with our agents and in our business to 
um, eliminate distractions by staying ahead of them. And those Friday emails have definitely helped us be efficient, as efficient as possible. So I'll write that in here, just like Friday check-in. And as you guys as agents, if you find that Thursday makes more sense or Wednesday, just do what makes sense for your business, but it will help you in the long run to send a generic email. Um, okay, so we're maintaining this transaction. What's next? Appraisal, yes. Anything good that we can do through the appraisal? Another touch, another check in, anything you guys can think of. We had a, I mentioned it two times now, but yeah. we had a really good session with Tony earlier. Yeah. And um, we talked about an appraisal waiver. And so, you know, not a lot of agents know about it, but reaching out to your lender and yeah. seeing if before you put in an offer, if you can get an appraisal waiver. Yeah. And, you know, I asked my lender and he was like, yeah, I do it every time. So I didn't know that, but that's an even better thing to like, talk, you know, sell to your client. But so if that is the case, then that is, you know, that's oh, absolutely. Golden. See, that's I think we've waiver. seen we've seen less of them. I yeah. feel like in the last even like three weeks, just due to the market slowing down a little bit, and we've definitely dealt with more negotiating of appraisals. But we, I mean, through July, we were crushing appraisal waivers. <laughs> yeah, which was great. But yeah, something you wouldn't have to worry about. But, um, okay, so appraisal, just check in, letting them know that it's good to go. And something else um, that has been like a really nice operations touch has been anytime we get an email, we're calling and then sending a follow-up email because that eliminates them calling us after they read the email that we sent. So typically we would call and be like, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Smith, Congratulations, we're through the appraisal. Everything came back at value, no work orders, we're good to go. What, what is gonna happen next is we're gonna just kind of wait. We'll schedule your inspection walkthrough to make sure all those items were taken care of as well as we'll schedule a final walkthrough. What questions do you have? Done or what can we close at noon? We're like, yeah, okay, great. I'll ensure to get that to title. I'm gonna also send you an email kind of with a wrap up of what we just talked about. Otherwise, I'll look forward to or I'll send you an email next Friday if you do have any other questions, call the board back. But that eliminates them reading that email on their own time and calling us with questions. So that's something that if we can stay on top of it, I think phone calls are still super important. I know a lot of people are texting and doing that, but they get questions answered faster. So I highly recommend making a call, following it with an email. That makes sense? Okay, so we are getting close to close. What are we doing? What are your guys' pre-closing to-dos? Making sure final walkthrough is scheduled. Yep. What else are we checking? Maybe utilities. Great. Stop. What else is agents? Should we feel obligated to read? As much as a lot of agents don't. Our closing disclosure, our Alta, we need to make sure we're getting paid the right amount. As well as our clients aren't paying more than need be. I highly recommend there is one thing I have learned you guys earn your money, read through that Alta, as if a point two is missing, you could be missing like $3,000. And so it also allows us. To tell our clients, hey, I read through all of this. Looks good to go. Feel free to take a peek and let me know if you have questions. Yeah, because if, if title miss, instead of saying, you know, $3.99, they say $3.39 for the broker admin commission, yeah. they are not going to go back and ask for that money. Right. Right. And then you're out of it. Yeah. And we, we've learned our lessons where a lot of our listings are 6.5% commission. And so if we're not finding the difference between 3.3 .3 and 3.8, that's a chunk of money. And so we've had to modify our systems. 
based on that, being like, it's our intention as well as should be your intention to protect your client's money as well as your own. We throw those for now with us. Right. And um, it's always good to, I request them to be sent to me instead of to the client oh. because um, one time the seller had to bring money to the table and she didn't know she was going to have to because when she got her her mortgage final payoff she did it herself it wasn't a final payoff it was i looked at how much i owed and then that's what i told title the title's like well that's not actually what it is and right. so she had like a bunch of money she had to walk to the table with and was super pissed and i'm like so title i'm gonna need all of that yeah. first and if it's a delicate situation then we will do it together, but you can't just send it out. And then my client calls me and is like, what is going on? Right? Mm -hmm. So it, that communication is so important. So you have to do that. Right. That's like, if I can tell you guys one thing, protect your money, protect your client's money. We do that. Um, Even though it's not super fun to look at. It's not. Just look for your two percent. Yep. Two, about the Make sure that money. pro, so I would like to go price, proceeds, commission. That's all we need to look at. Everything else is, I will never understand. Right, it's just too much. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all we need to look at. Price, proceeds, commission. Which I think is how it's actually in the document too. So, I don't know what you that. Um, okay, so we are two weeks out from closing. Uh, something that we do is we send a two week out email that just says, we're two weeks away, here's what to expect. Get your utility set up. We're going to schedule a final walkthrough. Um, you're going to review your Ulta. You get wiring information from title. And we usually will call and then send this email. Because if you have a first time home buyer, by two weeks out, they, and I should say sellers too, everyone forgets how to move, which I don't understand. <laughs> but it will happen. People will be like, OK, so we close on the house and then we move out. And we're like, no, no. <laughs> no, no, never. Let me walk you through what's going to happen. Been a thing. <laughs> but we've run, I mean, we've run into it 10 to 15 times where people are yes. like, okay, so what do I do? We're like, you're going to you take sure your you're out of it. Yeah, you're going to take your things. <laughs> We're going to move them out into a truck. And you're going to come to closing. Sit in the street. Right. <laughs> and then I also think it's a really good time to set the expectation with your buyers that what is broom swept is oh. different to everyone. Because that's all it says in the purchase agreement. The house has to be broom swept. And unfortunately, we've had people that are like, you need to come over this place is a disaster. And it's like some crumbs in the fridge. And certain things were like, this isn't a disaster. This is what our expectation was to you that it's going to be broom swept. What that means to everyone is different. But this is what normal people do. They didn't deep clean everything. Right. Yeah. Like if you guys, and that's something we'll say in our two week email hey you're closing at noon get some cleaners in there at two and everything can be moved in a little bit later you're good to go if you if there are those people will be like okay that's great who do you recommend or you know what we'll be fine we'll just kind of clean it as we go but we've run into it enough that it's been something we've had to change in our system to notify those clients that room swept doesn't mean spotless and I mean, it just happened to us a week ago, and that was crumbs in the fridge. And I was like, oh, no. Right. OK. So send a two week and a phone call. And then we're at closing. What are we doing at closing? We for sure have a gift, and we're yes. taking a picture. And we're asking for a review. Love it. Review and referral. Something we've done that I highly recommend is we create a little QR code that they just scan and it goes to our review page. So you guys, if you have a business Facebook business page, there's literally just like a random QR code creator. You can put that link in there, copy that QR code and put it on like a sheet of paper. Just leave it there and be like, okay, well, they're making copies. You can be like, hey, here's an easy way to leave me a review. Would love to know about your experience. So that's been really nice for us to get. I think this year we're at just over 200 reviews because of implementing simple things. 
that alleviated us constantly in person being like, can you leave me a review? Can you leave me a review? And then something else we've implemented is a file close email. And so I think it's one month after closing, if we haven't gotten a review from them, we'll send an email, hey, I still had your file on my desk. I see you haven't left us a review. Would you mind leaving us a review so I can close out your file? And then they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, moving has been crazy, but it actually makes them feel like their file is physically sitting on our desk and they need to leave us a review. So I recommend that one. Uh, file clothes. Also for clothing gifts, do things that you know that they will use and not throw away. So like a bottle of wine is great, but likelihood once it's drank, it's going in the garbage. So think of unique things such as like, they do cutting boards, which can be really efficient, especially we work with some Etsy shops that if you order like 20 at a time or 10 at a time, they give you a discount. So there's just a few really good things that I highly recommend using. And don't waste your time, money on things that are gonna be thrown in the trash. It's there to remind them. Okay, what do we have questions on for the buyer side? Oh, that's all I got to do. Sorry. <laughs> I'll do selling side next time. Questions, concerns, anything about our process? I feel like I <clears throat> have never had um, an Ulta emailed or sent to me two weeks out. Like I literally get it like two days before closing because so that's when they know their final amounts and whatnot that they need to bring to the closing table. And so that's also when I get to like read through the Alta to make sure that commissions and everything is right. Yeah, absolutely. So typically it's going to be three days. Um, I mean, we also have like an email that we just sent over to title two weeks out to say like, here is the purchase price here's commission, here are proceeds, just so that when we do get it, it's as like exactly what it needs to be. So our agents do review them and know they're good to go. But yeah, typically three days, I think is what they need in regards to legality for final numbers. Okay, and when you say proceeds, what do you, on the buyer side, what do you mean for your proceeds? Yeah, so if like the seller is giving uh, like, the buyers paying the buyers closing costs or anything like that or okay. let's say that there was an issue with appraisal and both agents are contributing five hundred dollars like what are what's going towards their um uh, purchase price if that makes sense does that make sense yep and then on appraisal um there's even been times with that too that you know i don't it's not like I get to see the appraisal kind of like inspection, like the, the buyer owns the rights to them. So I don't get to necessarily get sent that or to see that or to know what the number out for the appraisal was. So sometimes like my lenders will just kind of, I feel like skip me or say, oh, yep, appraisal was done or appraisal was ordered on this date or whatever. But then they go straight to the client and they say, yep, it was finished at so-and-so time this morning, blah, 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 like sending it over to you. And then my client actually sees something before me or can know what it appraised for. And I don't know any of that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I would say like the biggest thing with that is just continual communication with the lender. Unfortunately, they, we didn't pay for the appraisal. So the, it will go to your buyers. Typically, if there's an issue, our lender is approaching us first saying like, hey, we're $5,000 difference in appraisal value, or let's say that value is good, but there's peeling paint and it needs a stair railing for FHA. And so we're like, okay. But I mean, I would say that's a relationship with your lender too, to in, ensure that you, they're coming to you as a partner as well. I would say. Yeah. I'd say that's true also with an inspector. Like I had a client who just lost her stuff last weekend and or last week and the the inspector reached out to me and was like okay i don't think she is emotionally ready to buy a house and she wasn't so but we had that conversation and i think that's so important too with cassandra with your lender like i had a 
an appraisal thing come up and my, um, so what is it called? Not the loan officer, but like the loan processor. processor yeah. The loan processor called me and said, okay, we came in a value, but we have these two things. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? And I was like, I want to tell that other agent. And then I want to tell my client because it was something, it was like the, she didn't have an inspection and everything in the house was totally fine, except the dryer hookup wasn't done. Okay. And I was like, well, oh my gosh, how are we going to get this done? Right? Well, it's FHA and they called it mm -hmm. because then the gas stove wouldn't go on because it's not hooked up. Right. So now it's like, I want to be in control of that. So I make sure that that's done because my client still needs to pay that reinspection. Right. But their reinspection is only 125 or something mm -hmm. in, re in comparison to an entire inspection. Right. But it's like, if I can be the bearer of that information, then there's so much less chaos and confusion going on. So well, and I think if you can important. come to a conversation with answers, first coming to a conversation and just kind of being like, this is what it is. Right, right. Yeah. So that can happen where they, your buyer waives their inspection and then because it's an FHA loan, something gets flagged on there. And then like on your purchase agreement, you check off putting that buyer will pay reinspection fee. And then somebody has to, well, basically the seller, you have to go back to your seller and say, hey, this needs to be fixed, but then the buyer has to pay for it. And it's that's what's considered the reinspection fee. Correct. The, the buyer isn't paying for the fixes. They're just paying for the appraiser to come back out and ensure that that work is completed. Gotcha. Any other questions, guys? Thank you so much, Holly. Yes, and thanks course. everybody for, for coming and for Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. So we have class tonight, 5.30 to 7.30. I will see you there and um, have a good rest of the day. <laughs>